Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to Canada and the United States bizarre border. And this video is 10 years old. I mean, that's crazy to think that this channel was made... Wait, does this channel still make videos? I've never, internet, the I've never reacted to this channel, but... I mean, yeah, it still makes them. Big channel as well. Oh well, damn, all the videos get big time views. But I saw this pop up and I thought... Yep, yeah, that's a bit of me. But it is 10 years old, so I mean... I don't know how different the style of YouTube video, video will be, but we're going to check this out anyway. Hopefully going to enjoy. Links are also in the description to my Patreon, where you can see reactions that I can't post onto YouTube. But let's see and learn about this bizarre border that I do know quite a bit about already. And it's probably going to be to do with Britain um, around the 17th, 17th century, 18th century, with Britain like, trying to... Trying to control the US and Canada and then the, the border being made so I'm sure Britain is the reason for the for the bizarre border but yeah we're gonna see Canada and the United States share the longest straightest possibly boringest border in the world but look closer and there's plenty of bizarreness to be found while these sister nations get along fairly well they both want to make it really clear whose side of the continent is whose and they've done this by carving a 20 foot wide space along what is this true so throughout the whole border there's a 20 meter space on the border all five and a half thousand miles of it no there's not is this true with the exception of the rare new england town that predates national borders or the odd oh. airport that needed expanding this space is the no touching zone between the countries and they're super serious about keeping it clear it matters not if the no touching zone runs through hundreds of miles of virtually uninhabited alaskan yukon wilderness those border trees will not stand which might make you think this must be the longest, straightest, deforested place in the world, but it isn't. Deforested, yes, but straight, not at all. Sure, it looks straight on a map, and the treaties establishing the line say it's straight, but in the real world, the official border is 900 lines. Oh, what the fuck? I did not know that. Things ...that zigzag from the horizontal by as much as several hundred feet. How did this happen? Well, imagine you're back in North America in the 1800s. The 49th parallel, one of those horizontal lines you see on the globe, has just been set as the national boundary. And it's your job to make it real. You are handed a compass and a ball of string and told to carefully mark off the next two-thirds of a continent. Don't mind that uncharted wilderness in your way. Just keep the line straight. Yeah, good luck with that. The men who surveyed the land did the So they've done this ages ago. It's so weird, right? Because you could do you could have anything and a lot of borders don't really have any signs or anything, but what is stopping someone from crossing this? I know if you get caught in the other country then you're gonna get in big trouble. But you can easily just sneak across this and you can just sneak back without being like without it being like detected or anything. Unless I'm gonna find something out soon. But this is a strange border man. I guess it is obviously because of the close relations and it's kind of similar probably to like scotland and england's border or england and wales's border like there's not really a border between them because the relations between the countries are pretty good or very good and it just yeah i mean i don't know how often people will cross this border but and also when it's such a big border it's not really going to be easy to just watch all of it either like it's just going to be it's going to be impossible to be honest i guess the cameras will help maybe there is cameras but crazy that they've done this a long time ago and they've kept it the same the best they could and built over 900 monuments they're in about mm. as straight a line as you could expect a pre-gps civilization to make but it's not the kind of spherical planar intersection that would bring a mathematician joy <laughs> nonetheless these monuments define the border and the oh, there's a lot and they're not that far from each other the no touching zone plays connect the dots with them Oh, and while there are about 900 markers along this section of the border, there are about 8,000 in total that define the shape of the nation. 8,000? Despite this <laughs> massive project, Canada and the United States still have disputed territory. There's a series of islands in the Atlantic that the United States claims are part of Maine, and Canada claims are part of New Brunswick. Canada, assuming the islands are hers, built a lighthouse on one of them, and the United States, assuming the islands are hers, pretends the lighthouse doesn't exist. It's not a huge problem, as the argument is mostly over tourists who want to see puffins and fishermen who want to catch lobsters but let's hope the disagreement gets resolved before someone finds oil under them i wonder if it's been um if they've decided now because this video is old so maybe it's been changed since that lighthouse even the non-disputed territory has a few notably weird spots such as this tick of the border upward into canada zoom in and it gets stranger as the border isn't over solid land but runs through a lake to cut off a bit of canada before diving back down to the u.s this spot is home to about 100 americans and is a perfect example of how border irregularity wait 
That is so wild, man. So you have to go... I love these sorts of ones where you have to go through another country to get back to your country. Because it's kind of... It's, there's, there's, this, there's a similar one on the east coast. No, on the west coast of US and Canada. I think it's near Vancouver. Or somewhere, somewhere around that region where it's kind of similar to this, the same sort of situation. And I find it so wild. It's so fascinating to me that they've managed to just keep it like this. Surely it would just be easier if the US just took their land away from here and then Canada took a bit of land away. So it just balanced it out. But now they're just like, we will keep it this way. And fair enough. It's, do what you want to do, but it's just wild. Onto the US. This spot is home to about 100 Americans and is a perfect example of how border irregularities are born. Back in 1783, when the victorious Americans were negotiating with the British, who controlled what would one day be Canada, they needed a map, and this map was the best available at the time. While the East Coast looks pretty good, the wester it goes, the sparser it gets. Under negotiation was the edge of what would one day be Minnesota and Manitoba, but unfortunately that area was hidden underneath an inset on the map, so the Americans and the British were bordering blind. Seriously. Oh, no. They guessed the border should start from the northwestern part of this lake and go in a horizontal line until it crossed the Mississippi somewhere. But somewhere turned out to be nowhere as the mighty Mississippi stopped short of that line which left the border vague until 35 years later when a second round of negotiations established the aforementioned 49th parallel. But there was still a problem as the lake mentioned earlier was both higher and less circular than first thought, putting its northwesterly point here so the existing border had to jump up to meet it and then drop straight down to the 49th. <laughs> I love it, you know what? These sorts of things are what I love, to be honest. When you just see these things, like, like I love geography. So when I see this sort of stuff, it just fascinates me so much because they they are like, they're closer to Canada. They go through Canada, but they are American. And I just love that. It's so weird and wacky, but it must be a fascinating life to have, to be fair. Awkwardly cutting off a bit of Canada before heading west to the remainder of the continent. And it turns out you can't just draw a straight-ish line for hundreds of miles without causing a few more problems. One of which was luckily spotted in advance, Vancouver Island, which the 49th... See, this is the one that I was thinking of. There's, are they going to talk about it here? Is he going to talk about it here? ...would have sliced through, but both sides agreed that would be dumb, so the border swoops around the island. Oh, okay. However, next door to Vancouver Island is Point Roberts, which went... See, this is the one, man. This is the one I know. This one's even crazier, though. ...unnoticed, and thus today the border blithely cuts across. It's a nice little town home to over a thousand Americans, but has only a primary school, so its older kids have to cross international borders four times a day to go to school in their own state. Man. In a pleasing symmetry, the East Coast has the exact opposite situation with a Canadian island whose only land route is a bridge from the United States. And these two aren't the only places where each country contains a bit of the other. There are several more, easily spotted in satellite photos by the No Touching Zone. Regardless of if the land in question is just an uninhabited strip in the middle of a lake in the middle of nowhere, the border between these sister nations must remain. You know what? In the middle of a lake in the middle of nowhere, the border- It is actually somewhat noticeable. Unless I'm just thinking that, but there is like a slight line here. And maybe I'm just f thinking things, but I can see it. There's like a, a set, it's like, that is quite strong. Unless the video is making it. ...between these sister nations. No, the line goes across. That is so wild. Again, maybe the, the, the person who edited this just made it more obvious on purpose, but that's crazy. From this distance, you can actually somewhat picture the line and see it, even though it's not even that wide. ...must remain clearly marked. Damn. Well, there we go. This is a fun little reaction. I love these types of videos where you just see borders and just geography facts and all that sort of stuff. I, with my Canadian father and American mother, I'm living proof that the no touching zone thing doesn't always work. <laughs> I accidentally crossed into Canada during a hunting trip and the Canadian trooper I ran into was super nice and gave me a ride back to my truck and gave me some homemade jerky he smoked. Colson with the CSBA is a great officer. Damn. That's a cool little story. I love how the US and Canada... Uh, I love how the US and Canada diligently co-manage a no-touching zone that maintains their border exactly. And meanwhile, in Europe, some farmer moved a rock slightly which changed the border... Changed the border of France and it took them three years to even notice. What? I did not know that. Living in Australia, all this border stuff is really fascinating. Yeah, I guess in Australia you haven't known that's none of that stuff. But um, this is a little, little um, reaction that to be fair, I enjoyed it. It was a short video, but it was fascinating. And yeah, I mean, let me know your thoughts. If you're someone who lives, I would love to know if any of you watching this reaction live in one of these sections where you're basically cut off from your country. Because it's just so fascinating to me. Because 
you're close you're probably closer to schools or whatever in canada but you obviously i guess for legal purposes you have to go around canada back canada back to some area in the u.s it's just wild to me but i really enjoyed this reaction and yeah let me know your thoughts until next time peace